Why did we choose this life? Why did we become superheroes? We dedicate our lives to fighting crime for one reason. To make a billion dollars on a superhero franchise. Superheroes and video games, there's a lot of stuff to take the piss out of. Yeah. There just is. We learned so much from Stick of Truth that we decided, let's do another one and take everything we've learned and kind of make it better. And so we did yeah. learn a lot, and I think this game's going to be much, much better. And now it's going to be worse because yeah, I just said that. You just said that. So there's Stick of Truth, and this literally happens like the next day in town. Your superpowers are no match for me. Everybody, switch games. We're playing superheroes now. And you're still that same character. You're still that kid that did all that stuff with the stick. This dork. Wearing a little crown? And now something new is happening in town. And so even though you've really risen to prominence in the Stick of Truth game, they're all like, well, you can't play this with us. You're nobody again. Does this look like a superhero to you? It just seems like a perfect RPG thing of like, you're this big, powerful person, and now you're nothing, and you've got to work your way back. Matt and Trey are both gamers. They've really invested a lot of time and effort into this project and working closely with Jason and his team to make sure that they nail this process perfectly. Even as we're first starting to figure out the first ideas of what it could be, we brought everyone from Ubisoft down and, and had them in those meetings. We have this big fight where the kids split up and that's basically backstory. How come I have to have the Netflix series? I want a movie too. Do I get my own movie? Not everyone gets their own movie. Maybe we'll just go and do our own franchise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you want Civil War? Is that what you want? Yeah, dude, it's Civil War. F you. Oh, f oh f you. Get out of my house. Oh, it'd be so cool for them to be in a fight on opposite sides. <laughs> Mom, Kenny hit me right in the face. Our goal, what we said from the beginning was, we still want that feeling that everyone had of, you know, putting their underwear on the outside of their pants and running around with a cape and being like, I'm going to save the town. But then we're just rehashing the same old material. There's nothing wrong with doing the exact same movie to start a franchise. How's it going, bro? My name ah! I started going back and watching PewDiePie play Stick of Truth. This game is really detailed. You got to appreciate it for that, man. And it was just the best material I could have because it was like I was watching an audience member play it and what they were thinking about it. They're all kind of similar, the attacks or whatever. And going, well, this part's lame. And I'm like, okay, that part's lame. You know, I'm like, <laughs> you know, it was just great to have that as a resource. <laughs> Dude, what the f Who let this ordinary citizen into the coon lair? There are RPG elements. You can level up your character. There are certain powers that you can equip to your character. Ah, uh, yes, like the Flash or Quicksilver. I like it. You have a team of buddies that join you in all of your combat, and they all have their unique personalities and powers as well. <sighs> It is an outrageous tactical RPG. Bringing the thunder! In a superhero suit. This time, it's serious. Game development is different from the way that Matt and Trey run the show. We are very familiar with their process over there. They do a six-day sort of turnaround from nothing to making an actual episode for the show. And we do have to elongate that a little bit for our game development process. One of the challenges that we knew we would face is that Trey wants to try stuff and change stuff, and we need to be as fast as the show, or at least try to get somewhere close. So the process begins, uh, it comes out of the writer's room, we start with a script. Trey will give us a draft, and the majority of the artwork and design work that's going into this game is, is designed by our department. Part of the fun of the first game was that you get to pick what type of character you are, what costumes you get to wear. Part of this game is going to have that too, where you get to sort of dress your character up based on your superpower or based on what type of superhero that you are. So these are some concepts that we created to kind of get an idea of what these kids would look like. There's a very specific style to South Park. Not everyone can just simply animate and make it look like South Park. There's a lot of little nuances that I've had to learn. It is much more complex than some of the more high graphic games that I've worked on simply because it's so hand-drawn and it's a unique style. There's a lot of attention to detail in the show. If you look at a tree, none of the trees are exactly the same. They have different lines because everything is hand-drawn. I think the hardest feature that we've had to develop so far has been combat. The combat stuff is definitely the most like intense technical gameplay part of it. We knew we wanted to keep turn-based. You were hurt, yes, but the intruder had made a critical mistake. He pissed you off. Because that works really well for timing and comedy and allows us, like, the conceit of the boys 
playing a game within a game. <laughs> nice. But we definitely wanted it to be version 2.0. I think we can all agree that this kid shows a lot of potential. We're expanding upon the combat, moving from a more traditional JRPG turn style to something that's a little more tactically based. That pretty much allows our players to have a lot more flexibility in terms of how they attack combat. Car! Car! Stay out of the street, damn kids! F you, dude. It's Civil War, dick. Being able to pick uh, which heroes they want at their sides, combining powers and abilities, and positioning their characters uh, adeptly. You're actually having to uh, think a little bit more about your next move and you know, maybe even two, three moves ahead. You know, you want it to be complex enough to be fun and challenging and have strategies, but you also want it to be simple enough that it looks like South Park and it is just still fun. We established in Sick of Truth that you have a magical butthole, and so this kind of goes to the next level yeah, where we're like, you how can we make your farts more powerful than what it was in Sick of Truth? And we're like, you could start to bend time. Yeah, if you make a, it really rips a, it rips a hole in the space time. <laughs> you can really rip really one. Can, yeah, you can really rip one. Which again, was one of those things like, oh, that's a great idea, but then when you start to put it into a video game system, you know, it's it's really hard to figure out. So I think we figured out a good, yeah, I think we figured out a good time fart system. A game is such a different animal than a TV show or a movie or anything. I don't want just a movie where I press X a lot. What I'm psyched about with Fracture is that I just like the fact that there's like something that we are doing that we couldn't do in a show. And there's a way to experience the town and jokes in a way that you couldn't do in a show. There are going to be those moments where you're gonna look at it and go, oh my God, that was really cool. We're really excited. We're excited to tell this particular story. Good Fritz, go! South Park, the fractured butthole. <laughs> it was originally called the butthole of time. Yeah. You know, they, they ran it past the whatever and they said you can't put butthole. The retailers in your time. won't put butthole. The retailers on, won't put it there. On a shelf. So I just sat there at my desk for hours and how do I get past butthole, this? Butthole, butthole, but, <laughs> butthole, <laughs> butthole, butthole, butthole. <laughs> it was actually one of my proudest moments.